Hello everyone, it's me Troy and I'm here with another video. I got my hat on because I feel like I have a big ass head and I know I do. I got a big ass head so I wear a hat on camera. At least it looks big on camera. Everything looks big on camera but that head is just big on camera, okay? With that out of the way, I do want to say that I am heartbroken to hear about Sue Grafton's passing. As you guys know, Sue Grafton is like one of my top three favorite authors. Um, she's number one as it concerns the contemporary woman in the crime fiction, private eye, P.I. hardball detective fiction mystery genre. She's number one. Um, uh, I don't know how, how I can get into this. I discovered Sue Grafton years ago. Um, especially it really, she came at a really good time for me. I mean, I've already, I've already loved mysteries. I've already had aspirations of writing in the mystery genre. I made a video of that year, uh, last year. But, um, I was reading Patricia Cornwell at the time, Tess Garrison at the time, and in college, we was reading Beowulf and Robinson Crusoe, both of which bored me to tears. I don't care, I'm being honest. I know they're like the classics and all this stuff, girl. I don't care. It's boring to me. But, um, she came at a time where I was so caught up on uh, Patricia Cornwell that I was done reading her. I was done reading Tess Garrison, and as someone who likes to write mysteries, I was like, I didn't want to write a forensic thriller series like um, Patricia Cornwell, and I didn't want to do police procedural. Um, I read detective stories before, but none of them has really hit as close to me than uh, Kenzie Milhone, Sue Grafton's Kenzie Milhone character. And I say that because the number one thing that I love and admire about Kenzie that both of us share is the fact that we're loners a lot of people don't they don't believe i'm a loner but girl i am it's like i don't look social media i don't i don't have an instagram i ain't got time for it i don't have a snapchat i don't feel like it um i'm i'm not even on twitter i'm on twitter but i don't use twitter i don't think i've made a twitter announcement or whatever since february and i got a facebook but i only use that to keep up with my friends who live out of state basically but i don't do social media i keep a very small circle um and um, I'm I'm a loner, and I like it that way. Like I'm one of those type of people. Like when I'm good, and I don't like to be I don't really like to be bothered too much, you know. But um, Kenzie is the same way, and I've always liked it about her because although she is someone who is a loner, she do have to go out and make sense of the the world outside of her, especially consider consider she's a private investigator. But I love that aspect. I love the fact that she was an independent thinker, um, that she thought for herself. Her love life sucked, which is very, um, very on par with myself. You know, we're we're some very uh, we're some unrelenting uh, forces when it comes to love. You're not gonna tell us what to do, which is very much like Kenzie. I love the fact that she was a goody two shoes like myself as well. Although we do prance around the law sometimes, I love the fact that she was not into it. She didn't like authority, which is like myself as well. And I just like the fact that she was just her own person, her own character. And you basically either you get on the you get on the damn ride with her or you don't she could do without you and I'm kind of the same way um but that really spoke to me she was the kind of character that I did want to express in my own writing except she's gonna be black my girl gonna be black <laughs> but um and that's just I just fell in love with that character in that series since then so I am saddened to know that um Scrafton passed and there won't be a Z which is the final book. And it's so crazy because I remember reading an interview where she, she was talking to, I think her name was Barbara Peters, the lady around the Poison Pan bookstore. And she was telling Barbara Peters, you know, well, you better hope I make it. And then here we go. She didn't make it all the way to Z. And um, Sue Grafton, she is very protective of Kenzie. Uh, there won't be any movies. There won't be any TV shows. There won't be any, um, nobody's going to co-write the final book Z. Something that Elizabeth Peters actually had done with, with Joan. After Elizabeth Peters died, Joan Hess wrote the rest of her book, her last book in her Amelia Peabody series that came out back in July. But apparently you won't be getting that from Grafton. And I kind of, it's, 
I kind of appreciate that thought, and then at the same time, it's like, man, but I just we just need one more book, and it'll be the end. But um, it really is unfortunate. I hate when, like anybody else, I hate when. Well, you can't say hate, but um, it's saddening when an author dies who you love and been reading for years and years and years. Same with celebrities that you've loved. It's like if Pam Greer passed away, I will freak out again, okay? Um, yeah, but yeah, that's it. That's really it. I don't want to get too far into the book, to, to this video on that. But um, what I did today was I went to my used bookstore at the library. And I bought a uh, four hardcover. Because I already I got all her books in paperback except for V except from V on up to the latest, which is why those are in hardback. But um I got uh I wish I could, hold on, let me go get them. But anyway, I ended up getting uh D is for Deadbeat in hardcover. I think this is a book club edition book. And you know what? I used to see these books all the time and it's like as soon as I go in there I notice that somebody got the some of the other ones that was there at first. But D is for Deadbeat. Um, this one is about, this has an interesting twist to it. It's about a boy, a guy, who, uh, I'm not going to get that part back. But anyway, he does something really interesting to get back at his father. We'll leave it like that. And then G is for Gumshoe. And I've always, always, always loved the, uh, her author photos because they're always different. And, you know, she's been writing, publishing these books since the 80s. So I love that sort of time capsule of looking at her you know from the 80s on forward into the now but um G is for gumshoe this one involved another private investigator going toe to toe with Kenzie and I think it was an elderly lady who left a nursing home or something but um anyway these are really good copies except for the dust jackets but I'm gonna wrap the book and then I got H is for homicide which is one of my top five favorite entries into the series because I love the entries in any series where the main protagonist or the detective is separated um from her resources and this one she is in an apartment complex an apartment building with this Mexican guy who has Tourette syndrome and um I can't remember the specific details but uh I forgot what they were trying to do what well, he was trying she was kind of like undercover but um they were doing something with uh car insurance or some kind of risky robbery gone sour uh i forgot what it was she was doing it was like a um okay he also has Tourette's syndrome which did nothing to smooth out the kinks in his erratic and often violent behavior it's I think they was it was some kind of fraud, fraudulent thing that he was involved with. Anyway, this is a really good copy. Like the pages are really crisp. The dust jackets are blown to hell, but the pages are really good. Is this the first edition, actually? I don't know. But anyway, I love this one. This one was a really good one. This one and L is for Lawless is probably one of the, one of my top favorites. And then I got um I is for Innocent. Once again, I love the older covers. The older covers are the bombs. And the old author pictures. Did I show this one? The old author pictures. Oh, yeah. Um, I love Eyes for Innocent. Because. I loved Eyes for Innocent. Because, first of all, there was a shootout in Kenzie's office at the end. That was really good. I want to find some of that. Because she had some great. I loved her dialogue. Uh. I bet you she said I bet you tell a lot of lies. Wait a minute. So he says, I get around. It's amazing how much information you can pick up in jail. And Kenzie's response is, I bet you tell a lot of lies yourself. You probably have a nine shot. He actually sounded flattered. You know how you never know, he said. And then she said, What made you so sure I'd come down here tonight? I pulled myself up onto my hands and knees. You didn't figure that out. You told Curtis you kept your gun here. That's why I set up the meeting at the bird refuge. I knew you'd never go down there without your gun. It was something else. Hey, he said, I'm talking to you. Uh, he tried. To, I tried to steal my breathing. He fired. Even now, anyway, there was a shootout in the office, and I loved the dialogue that went along with that. But the uh, crook in this book was this was a good one. This was a good one. 
Yeah, it, it was it was a good one. I if I tell you what happened, it'll give the whole damn thing away. But um, I got, but um, I went ahead and got these because I like I said I love the older covers. They were so colorful and everything, and then like the later covers, they were just kind of sterile looking. It was just like black, and then the letter M. But they had the they had more. They had um, they had. I think it was from Q or P on up to T there also. Um, they were only a dollar fifty a piece, so I said, you know what, I'll check back later this week and see if they're there. And um yeah, it's so sad. Just going through those books now, it's just it's really uh disheartening. Cause um I really I really enjoyed those stories. You know, they really spoke to everything that I wanted to create for myself as an aspiring writer in this particular genre. You know, so my girl, she gonna be something else too. Like a little bit, a little crazy. <laughs> but um, it sucks. But it is what it is. And you know, I although I will miss Sue Grafton, I think this is something that it makes. And this is this is not any. I'm just going off on the, the side here. But it it really makes me want to. It really makes me want to appreciate. Sarah Paresky a lot more because these two ladies both published their novels in 1982. Um, it makes me want to go back to the originator of the female contemporary woman and female private investigator uh, drama fiction, which was Maxine O'Callaghan. Um, and interestingly enough, I ordered two books in Marsha Muller's uh, series. The next book, which was uh, that I was missing, I couldn't find it anywhere. I just had to order, which was. The games they play in silence and leave a message for Willie. I can't wait. I, can't. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to read them. Those are the part of the Sharon McCone series. So, uh, there's Maxine O'Callaghan who wrote, uh, I forgot her protagonist's name, in the early, seven, in the mid-70s. And then in 1977, Sharon McCone came uh, from Marsha Muller. And then in 1980, 1982, Sue Grafton and Sarah Paresky came with uh, V.I. Wacharski and uh, Kids Email Home. Anything in between that, I don't know. I'm sorry. I just don't know. I'm, I'm talking specifically for female private investigators in their field. You know, that's that specific. Not like a female cozy character or a female police procedural and that sort of thing. I mean, specific private investigator, hardboard detective fiction female characters. But, um, that's it. I think I'm done. I just had to make this video. And, um, I think I'm gonna go eat. I'm sad now. What a somber video. And now I'm kind of pissed at myself because I should have went on ahead and got the rest of those books. But they'll be there. Child, knowing me, I'll go get them after work. After I get out tomorrow morning. When I wake up tomorrow morning. But, um, yeah. This is really, yeah. There's no words. There are no words. But it's all good. Anyway, that's it, guys. So I'm going to try to edit this video down. And I'm about to go eat. So, Rip Sue Grafted. Love you, lady. And hopefully, I can just, I can reread the series. Because it's been, I don't read, reread books. But, um, now that, yeah, they need to be reread now. Anyway, that's it. I was going to do a video on Wise for yesterday. But, um, when it came out in August... And then it was it was all over the place, and I just sometimes it's either sometimes I can do a video on a book or I can't, but I just didn't really feel like doing it. But I might go back and try to do a video on Wise for yesterday, the last Kissy Mill Home book. That is it. Love yourself. See you guys next year. I think I don't know. Bye.